Turn in your Bibles tonight to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. And we're going to read <clears throat> the passage as we go along and we study the Word of God. The title of my sermon tonight is kind of unusual, but it's How to Have a Dirty Towel. How does Jesus Christ want us to have a dirty towel? For three and a half years, <clears throat> Jesus has taught and had performed miracles and had lived with his disciples. But coming into the upper room experience, <clears throat> the disciples were arguing and fighting and uh, about who would have the biggest part in the kingdom of God. Did they really understand who Jesus was or why he had came? The disciples were focused on one thing, and that was themselves. What does, what does Jesus do? <clears throat> And it's, an, it's important to notice the time that this is taking place. Jesus, uh, at this time, he gets up and starts to wash their feet. Now think about the timing here. He was within hours of a crown of thorns. He was within, an, without, within hours of a cat of nine tails, of a crowd spitting in his face and being nailed to a cross. He knew his time had come and he knew it was his time to die for our sins, but yet he takes time out to do what? To humble himself and wash the disciples' feet. Jesus teaches them how to serve, or can I put it, how to have a dirty towel. Look in John chapter 13. Now before the feast, the true feast of the Passover, Jesus' time had come to die, uh, the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should uh, depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. So first of all, I want you to see the desire for a dirty towel. If we want a dirty towel, we're going to have to have a desire to get it. And the first thing we learn here in John chapter 13 and verse 1 is, that, uh, is Jesus' sincerity to have a dirty towel. He came, uh, uh, Jesus' sincerity came from the fact that he loved his, his disciples. He loved them all that he could, or he loved them to the uttermost. That's what the last part of the verse means. He loved them unto the end. True service comes from a heart of love. May we remember that. True service comes from a heart of love. May you ask yourself this que these questions tonight. Do I serve out of obligation? Do I serve because of pride? Do I serve because it is expected of me? Or do I serve out of a heart of love? Christ's love for us caused him to serve at any cost. Christ's love for us caused him to serve at any cost. So not only do we see Jesus' sincerity to have a dirty towel, we see, next of all, Jesus putting aside his authority. It's kind of interesting to note here. Let's look in verse 2 and 3. And the supper being ended, the devil having now put in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And it's kind of interesting how verse 3 is inserted here. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he was come from God and went to God. Christ was given all things into, the hand, into his hands, from God the Father. He was the one, may we remember, he is the one who should be served and should have been served. But our creator became a servant. So what is Jesus doing here? He has the authority. He has the position, but he puts it aside. And what does he do? He puts it aside to serve. He had the rightful authority. And uh, we see this, and we see that he left to the praise and adoration in heaven uh, to do what? Well, Philippians chapter 2, let's turn there, Philippians chapter 2. And verses 5 through 8 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no, of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men 
And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So we see there that Jesus' sincerity, his desire to have a dirty towel came for a heart of love. Jesus put aside his authority, the true authority and his rightful authority. So what do we see next in John chapter 13? We see Jesus' humility. Jesus' humility. Verse number four and five. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. And that he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel wherewith he was girded. Christ had the authority, but he humbled himself. He humbled himself to do the Father's will, and he humbled himself to teach the disciples a valuable lesson. You will not serve God effectively until you do these three things, until you sincerely serve him out of a heart of love, until you put aside your authority where you think you have a rightful place. And number three, you humbly submit to Christ. You can show your authority and do whatever you want, but are you willing to get off your self-focus and give it to God and humbly do the Father's will? So we see, first of all, the desire for a dirty towel. Second of all, we see the debate for a dirty towel. Let's look in verses 6 through 11. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, what I do thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. And he knew who should betray him? Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So we see here a debate about the dirty towel or for a dirty towel. First of all, let us notice the pride in washing. The pride in washing. Peter knew at this time it was the job of one person to wash another's feet. And that was the job of a slave. It was the slave's job in Bible times to wash uh, people's feet. The pride in washing was a, was a badge of slavery. And Peter was wondering in his mind, if Christ is willing to become a servant and to become a slave, then what am I? And Peter tells Jesus to do what? Stop, stop, don't wash my feet. But we see here, we see Peter's pride. And we have to ask ourselves, where do we have pride in serving? Where is our pride in serving? Maybe we're asked to serve in the nursery. Oh, I'm not serving there. That's, that's, that's below me. Or maybe we're asked to clean the church or to clean the bathrooms. Oh, oh no, I can't do that. There's no way I'm going to serve in that kind of capacity. There is pride in a person's heart who won't do whatever the Lord wants them to do. Then we see here not only the pride in washing, we see the principle in washing. This act of Jesus was a badge of fellowship, a badge of fellowship. Peter, if you don't let me wash your feet, then you won't have fellowship with me. Jesus wanted to do this for his disciples. He wanted to do, that, do this for him, for them. Now we need to ask ourselves this question. Are we trying to do what the Lord wants to do for us? Are we trying to do what the Lord wants to do for us? Are we blocking the Lord out and not letting him do the things he wishes to do for us? Are we telling the Lord, Lord, I don't need you. I can handle this on my own. But Jesus served the disciples out of a heart of what? What did we learn out of a heart of love in verse 1? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible, does he not love us? Yes, he does. And the Lord loves us, and he wants to do things for us. Many times we serve in our own power, and as we serve in our own power, we are not in fellowship with him. 
We're not in fellowship with him. And when we're serving in our own power, what are some of the things we